Good evening, everyone, along with Don Sutton, Pete Van Weeren, welcoming you to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where, as you can see, the rain is falling ever so lightly at the moment, and they took the tarp off about 15 minutes ago. We're getting ready to play this game and start it on time, but then the rain picked up a little bit again, so we are going to be delayed in the start of game two of this series between the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. Phillies won here last night, getting their lead back up to four games, and Don Sutton, Greg Maddox on the mound tonight for Atlanta when we do play, and that's the kind of guy you want to have out there when you're trying to get a win against the first-place team. Yes, it is, because Maddox doesn't really care what happened yesterday. He doesn't care who you're playing. He is the consummate pitcher in all of baseball right now. And I think that uh, the only thing better than having him come out there for you after a loss would have been having him go out there on the first night. But John Smoltz pitched a good ball game last night. It was a game that could have gone either way. And I gained much respect for Tyler Green last night. What a gutsy performance. Normally, you don't see that responsibility handed to a youngster, but he handled it well. But Maddox doesn't care. He'll do a good job for the Braves. Let me ask you one question about a situation like this where the rain is coming and going as you're trying to get ready to start a ball game and it interrupts your warm-up procedure. How does that affect the way you prepare for a game? It's an advantage being on the visiting club. And I'll tell you why. Because the starting pitcher has to have a timetable that he hits. If they, if they call now and say we're going to have a 720 start, then David West has to be ready at 720. Greg Maddox doesn't. Greg Maddox has the luxury of having his ball club bat the top half of the inning so he can work his timetable around whatever preparation schedule that he wants. Where it might cause a problem is let's suppose you get ready. Then you start to go out there. Then you have to sit down without having thrown a pitch. Then you basically have to warm up twice. So the advantage in a condition like this goes to the guy who's with the visiting ball club. Pitchers had been warming up for, oh, about five minutes or so before they decided to recover the field. And they'll have to go out and warm up again when we find out what time this one's going to start. But it is going to be delayed because of the rain here in Philadelphia. It's supposed to be off and on throughout the evening. Hopefully we won't get too much more of it here tonight. In the meantime, we're going to send you back to our studios in Atlanta for This Week in Baseball. following is a presentation of Turner Sports. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where after a brief rain delay, we are about set to get started with game two in the series between the Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm Pete Van Weer, and along with Don Sutton, welcoming you to Philadelphia. Braves now four games out after the opening loss in this series last night to the Phillies. And tonight, Don, we get a chance to look at a pitcher generally considered to be the best in baseball, and if anything, on the road, he's even better. Well, Pete, you can pitch him anywhere. This will be his 30th start against the Phillies. 16 wins, seven of them coming here in Veterans Stadium so sure he pitches well on the road against the Phillies his last 10 starts though on the road as good as you can do he is perfect six complete games an earned run average of less than one but Greg Maddox anywhere he'll pitch well and I guess if you were to ask him about pitching on the road if you know him you would know he is so positive he'd say I like it we get the score first He's one of the few pitchers about whom you hear media that cover the other team and fans who watch the other team say, I don't care who wins, I just want to see him pitch. Well, they'll get their chance here in Philadelphia tonight, and we'll be back with the lineups and all the action from the vet right after this. Atlanta Braves baseball brought to you by Beechwood Age Budweiser for a taste you'll find in no other beer at any price. This Bud's for you. And by Aflac, covering the unexpected cost of getting well. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. A lot of umbrellas still out here at the bet in Philadelphia. Looks like we're going to get this one underway, though. The conditions are wet. The field is wet. Keep an eye on the outfielders. They're going to play deep. That artificial surface is saturated in the outfield. Probably you can see right there. Uh, 
uh, Uncle Sam. That's that's probably nephew Sam there, but the rain's still falling here. Time for us to take a look at our Turtle Wax starting lineups. For the Braves, a little bit of a shakeup tonight. Bobby Cox has rewritten that lineup a little bit. Marquise Grissom will lead it off in center field. Jeff Blauser to follow. But Jose, Jose Oliva is going to start in place with Chipper Jones and hit third. Fred McGriff will bat cleanup. David Justice to follow. Mike Kelly in left field. Charlie O'Brien is going to catch and bat seven. At second base again tonight, Rafael Belliard hitting eighth, and Greg Maddox will complete the batting order for the Braves. Defensively, the Phillies lineup, no changes here. Longmire in left, Dykstra in center, Eisenreich in right, Charlie Hayes at third, Kevin Stocker at shortstop, Mickey Morandini will be at second, and Dave Hollins at first. Darren Dalton will catch, and David West will be on the mound. Here's the way the umpires will line up. There's a meeting. The guy on your left right there is keeping us all entertained. He just moved out of the picture, the Philly fanatic. Absolutely the best in the business. But lest we forget, let's do get to the umpires. There's the fanatic. Charlie Rutherford will call the balls and strikes. Jeff Kellogg moves to first base. The veteran and one of the best in the business down at second. That's Harry Wendelstadt. And Randy Marsh will be at third base. Take a look. Watch this guy. He really needs no commentary. He is the best in the business. Has his rain gear on tonight. <laughs> Pete, you and I have watched him for a number of years, but I think one of the best things that he does, and he has some great routines, is when they introduce the starting lineups. He has something for every. Uh, see, he, okay, let's get it going. <laughs> he has something for every one of the Phillies that is very positive and flattering. He has something for every one of the visiting players that is not so flattering. He's just trying to move things along here. Maybe he's the solution to speeding up the game of baseball. Good call. <laughs> the Phillies take the field. The Phillies take the field and the Fanatic will leave the field. David West, as we told you, will be making the start. This will be his seventh start. Maybe you remember down in Atlanta, he started a ball game. He only went two innings. I mean, he was throwing a steady stream of not a whole lot up there. And he was removed from the ball game for, quote, inability to generate arm speed, which was a first for a number of Earth us I'm sure that hasn't been the problem all the time but he has struggled against the Braves 0 and 2 in his career giving up almost eight runs a ball game but David West when he is on a sinking fastball a big slow curveball with a lot of break it gives uh, left hander some trouble he turns over his changeup it's just your conventional changeup he is a typical left hander originally uh, highly thought of highly sought out prospect from the New York Mets, he has modeled two or three uniforms, the Minnesota Twins and that of the Phillies. When he's on, he can be tough. When he's off, he has the inability to generate proper arm speed. We're about set to go. You will see all kinds of rain gear here tonight because it is still misting, but they're making every effort to get this ball game in. Weather forecast, if you're looking forward, it's supposed to blow through tonight and then tomorrow and Monday. Supposed to be kind of dry temperature in the low 80s, so it should be baseball weather tomorrow and Monday. But for tonight, umbrellas the order of the day. And for the first inning, the order of the mic goes to Pete Van Weer. Okay, thank you, Don. It'll be Marquise Grissom, Jeff Blauser, and Jose Oliva. New up here in the top half of the first. Talking about David West and that inability to generate proper arm speed. They were concerned there might be a physical problem, and they finally found one after sending him to two or three different doctors. They discovered that he had some tendonitis in that left shoulder. That was probably the cause of his arm speed problems. And they put him on the disabled list for one stint earlier in the year. Pitching is the application of mechanics. The body has so many parts to it. All you need is one little bitty thing to throw that lever out of whack, Pete, and you will have the inability to generate arm speed, as any of us who's ever done it would, will tell you. Here's Marquise Grissom, 295 for the year. And the first pitch of the game is drilled, a deep left field. Longmire going back on the warning track. He makes the catch, staggering a little bit as he was getting closer and closer to the wall. So Marquise jumping on the first pitch, nearly had himself an extra base hit. You're going to see some difficult footwork out there. 
That is slick on that warning surface there. He's playing in spikes, as I'm sure you will see most of the outfielders doing, but that outfield surface is nasty. That'll bring up Jeff Blauser, batting 232. He's just one for his last 16. And he goes after the first pitch, doesn't get it. The count on one. Eight homers, 17 RBIs for Blauser this year. Downstairs, one ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one coming. And it's taken inside for a ball, 2-1. and one. Charlie Relaford calling the balls and strikes tonight. And they're going to try to play through this light rain. David West also apparently struggling with another problem we weren't aware of, Pete. That's some sort of ankle brace that he's wearing there. It's filed back two and two. There you see it. He had to paint the stripe on it because he couldn't get his sock over it there. That's some pretty good Philadelphia ingenuity. Now a 2-2 pitch on the way to Blauser. And the slow curve stayed high in the count. Three and two now on Jeff. Jose Oliva waiting in the on deck circle. Too much time taken. Blouser steps out. Here's the payoff pitch to Blauser off the end of the bat deep short long throw for Kevin Stalker but he gets it there in time two down and that'll bring up Jose Oliva in the lineup tonight in place of the slumping Chipper Jones Chipper over for his last 15 so Bobby Cox giving him the night off and trying to get another guy who's been slumping Jose Oliva trying to get him going he's just hitting 154 for the year with only four hits in his last 46 trips. That's not a bad idea. I know that Chipper is not the kind of guy that would think it was some sort of punishment. Obviously you can't get better hitting on the bench but you can get out of the pressure out of the mix for a night or two. It's not I think it's a good idea. First game Chipper's missed. He and Fred McGriff coming into this game the only two Braves who had played in all 60 games. Down goes to two and zero. Oh. Two and one the count on Jose Oliva. He really has an all or nothing swing doesn't he. Especially two and oh three and one and three and two and more often than not when you take that swing it's going to be the nothing half of that equation. Here's the two one at the knees with a fastball on the outside corner that evens the count two and two. I think he is the kind of guy though Pete that is always going to have difficulty as a part time player. I think that swing with a lot of movement in it is going to be one that's going to need to get three or four at bats every day. In the air out of play right side. Still two and two on Oliva. Phillies have beaten the Braves in all five meetings this year. You'll recall they swept Atlanta in a four game series earlier in the year. And then winning the opening game in this series last night. Again fouled away and it's still two and two on Oliva. See how much plate protection and how much better coverage he has when uh, he, he takes a little bit more disciplined swing. And I think the tough part probably is convincing a young man who's not getting to play a lot. Two things. One, that he's strong enough to hit it out to right field with a disciplined swing. His thinking is, I don't get that many hacks. I better take advantage of them. High in the air to straightaway center. Lenny Dykstra waits for it out there. And he's got it. And it's a one, two, three start for David West. Braves go in order in the top half of the first. Quiet inning for the Braves. Now the Phillies coming to bat. Here's their batting order managed by Jim Fregosi, as I'm sure you know. Leading it off, it's going to be Lenny Dykstra. Mickey Morandini will bat second. Tony Longmire third. Dave Hollins in the cleanup role to follow Darren Dalton, Jim Eisenreich, Charlie Hayes seventh. 
Kevin Stocker eighth and David West will be the ninth hitter in the lineup. Defensively Kelly Grissom and Justice in the outfield Oliva Blouser Belliard and McGriff around third to first Charlie O'Brien gets the start and making his 13th start of the year Greg Maddox the numbers will speak for themselves. This will be his 30th start against the Phillies he carries a record of 16 and 7 against them 7 and 4 here at the vet. And Lenny Dykstra will lead it off. He was a big factor in the Phillies win last night. He had a couple of hits. Hitting 260 for the year. Still without a home run this year. He's one of several Phillies and spent some time on the disabled list. He had some back problems early in the year. And he takes the first pitch from Maddox up high. Ball one. Off the end of the bat toward third. Nice play by Oliva to his left. Throws on to first in time. Good play there by Oliva. If that ball gets by him, I don't know if Jeff Blauser would have been able to throw out Lenny Dykstra. I don't know if Jeff would have been able to plant and throw on that wet turf. Inside out swing wants to hit it on the ground. Look how far he goes. Good range by Oliva. I'm telling you, the Braves have two third basemen, two youngsters with as good a range as you'll find in the National League. Oliva, one of them. Now Mickey Morandini having a good year 287 four homers 25 runs driven and he takes a strike at the knees 0 1. Another ground ball left side Blouser up with this one. Low throw McGriff can't handle it. That'll be an error on the throw by Jeff Blouser. Jeff has plenty of time here sets himself a little bit of a side wheel could have been a little moisture on the ball because it was a sinking throw that just handcuffed McGriff if he bounces that three feet further out on the turf it's a whole home play if it's three feet closer to McGriff it's a whole home play but he bounced that right in no man's land for Fred McGriff that's his second error in this series he entered one last night in game one now Tony Longmire the left fielder 382 for the year. Couple of home runs, nine RBIs. Most of his playing time has been as a pinch hitter. Takes a strike. Hitting 424 in this ballpark this year. Backs him out of there, one and one. Maddox has nothing to go on but a scouting report on Longmire, so he's going to feel him out a little bit, try some tried and tested ways of getting him out. And one of the things you will see from Maddox is he'll cut that fastball in and then see how he looks at a changeup down and away against young guys. Over to first, and he almost threw that one by McGriff. Philly's very, very high on Longmire. They say that he's become a much more disciplined hitter this year, and because of that, really has a chance to become a top player for this team. He was kind of a free swinger in prior years. Right to the first baseman McGriff back to Blouser in time there and they'll not throw back to first. That's out number two Longmire becomes the runner at first. This is a tough play a lot of times but Fred got some uh, help here from the runner. Morandini was to the right field side. If he leads Blouser just a little bit, Blouser had to catch that ball and try to find the bag at the same time. That's a throw a first baseman doesn't get to make that often. It's not like a second baseman and a shortstop who are working together all the time. Good throw, though. That's a ho hum double play because Maddox was over at first doing what he's supposed to do. Two gone. Here's Dave Holland hitting 248. Four homers, 18 RBIs. He just got off the DL last week. Diagnosed with diabetes. That was a strange case. He was losing strength and losing weight, and they didn't know why. Finally, the diagnosis that he was a diabetic, and with treatment, he's back playing. Here's the 1-0. Another ground ball. This one right to Belliard. And a good start for Greg Maddox. The error doesn't hurt. The Phillies leave a runner at the end of an inning. No score. A little umbrella art for you as we go to the top half of the second. No score here at the vet. 
It'll be Fred McGriff, David Justice, and Mike Kelly do up against David West. Fred McGriff will start things, hitting 271, 10 homers and 38 runs driven in. They're back here tomorrow afternoon. Tom Glavin against Michael Mims, and then Monday, an early start, 6.05 Eastern time. Steve Avery against Kurt Schilling. And the Braves back home on Tuesday against the Dodgers. Oh, and one, the count of McGriff. Is that a regular scheduled time on Tuesday? That's uh, being the 4th of July? Yes, it is, but there will be fireworks afterwards. That bounces up there. One ball, one strike. Hopefully it won't be like that game you guys did a few years ago when the fireworks went off at 430. Didn't yeah, it? that was a long night. <laughs> Made even longer by Rick Camp. <laughs> and his one and only home run. Just missed the inside corner. Two and one the count. Here's his breaking ball. It doesn't get much harder than that. He wants to get you with the break and with the speed. It's not one he's going to snap off and try to get you to swing through or swing over. Held off and the count goes to three and one. McGriff is a guy who kind of pretty much pulls left handers on the ground but most of the balls in the air from right center to left field. And a big swing there didn't get it three and two. The three two pitch on the way and it's popped foul back into the upper deck. Even with that scouting report the Phillies may come as close to playing McGriff straight up in the infield as anybody that we see and with two strikes they move the left fielder closer to the line but see we're not used to seeing a third baseman that close to third or a shortstop that close to his normal position. The three two to McGriff strike three called inside corner. West records the strikeout he's retired four in a row. That's a perfect pitch gutsy pitch from a left hander you feed him a steady diet of breaking balls away and just nail it on the inside corner Darren Dalton would get him more calls if he would catch that kind of gently but you see Dalton a lot of times catch a ball and jerk it toward the middle of the strike zone he won't do that he doesn't do that as much as a lot of other catchers but this is one of the best jobs of handling the pitching staff you'll see Justice takes a strike hitting 267 he has seven homers 28 RBIs. That breaking ball caught the inside corner 0 and 2. One ball two strikes. Now the one two on the way and he got him looking fast ball at the knees in the outside corner. If David, has, if David West can pitch with this kind of control he can be very very tough. He has been an absolute artist to the first five hitters. Look at that fastball. Now that's a good job of catching it because most umpires will tell you if you're sitting in an area that looks like a strike you catch it comfortably and confidently. I'm going to give you a call and all David Justice can do is tip his head four perfect pitches to justice. Here's Mike Kelly hitting 210. Three homers, 14 RBIs. Fouls back the first one, the count 0 and 1. The 0 1 on the way, and the breaking ball is grounded foul on the left side. Count 0 and 2 on Mike Kelly. He's working horizontally and vertically Pete he's pitching inside outside he pops the fastball up just gave Kelly the breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone so he's given him two different pitches two different speeds and two different locations you can't just sit there and say okay I'm gonna look for one pitch in one spot. Here's the 0 2 pitch struck out the side fastball up and away Kelly down swinging six in a row set down by David West we go to the bottom half of inning two with no score. Bottom 
of the second pitching dominating and speaking of pitching let's take a look at our Hardy's leaderboard our category tonight National League starters best road earn run average no surprise we showed you what he had done in his last 10 Maddox atop the heat Martinez and Mims the 3 M category. Darren Dalton lays off here in the bottom of the second 242 six homers 31 RBIs he walked three times in the game last night and he takes a strike going one. Missing inside one ball one strike. Sharply hit but right at the shortstop Blouser. One gone. So all four outs recorded by Maddox thus far and infield grounders. And here comes Jim Eisenreich. What that tells you about Maddox right away Pete is that most of the time he's getting the ball down. Second thing is he's getting movement and that movement is toward the bottom of the strike zone. They're hitting over the top of it. He gets so many outs on just movement alone. Eisenreich having a great year 360 for the year first pitch swinging little two hopper out toward short Blouser has this one and quickly two are down here and they bottom half of the second I know Greg Maddox is not one who keeps records and milestones but that is one right there for him he is still a young man and his career started part time with Chicago at 86 his first full year 88 but for Greg Maddox that is two thousand innings and if he wants to and can and well, he can double that total very easy, maybe even work 5,000 innings. Here's Charlie Hayes hitting 295. He has six home runs, 44 RBIs. Pretty good offensive team when your leading RBI man can hit seventh in the batting order. 2 0. Three and zero, the count. It's only the third time all year, all year that Greg Maddox has gone three and zero on a hitter. There's a strike, three and one. That is remarkable. It is, and the other two times he worked at the three and two, and then threw him a three-two changeup. How about this? Fewer <laughs> walks. There are 124 relief pitchers in the major leagues that have more walks this year than Greg Maddox. Here's your three-two count. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Ground ball hit up the middle. Belliard can't get to it. Base hit for Charlie Hayes. And that is the first hit of the game for either side. And Hayes will take it. Only six for 36 in his career now against Maddox. On the outside part of the plate, sinking fastball. He got the ground ball that he wanted. He just didn't get it at an infielder like he's been doing all night and like he does most of the time. That'll bring up Kevin Stocker. The Phillies shortstop hitting 212 in the air. He's driven in 20. And he takes a strike in the outside corner, 0 1. There are three guys that in this lineup, I think if they're going to give Maddox trouble, they're going to do it. One is Morandini, two is Hayes. And Stocker is the third one because of his style of hitting. Little ground ball to the right side. Belliard gobbles it up. And that's all for Philadelphia in the second. Three more ground ball outs around the single by Charlie Hayes. We go to inning number three. Still no score. The beginning of perhaps another pitcher's battle here tonight. No score as we go to the top of the third. Lower third of the order. Charlie O'Brien, Raphael Belliard, and Greg Maddox. New up against David West. Charlie O'Brien will start things hitting 299 for the year with five homers, 10 runs driven in. Braves collectively going through a little bit of an offensive slump again. Only one run in the game last night. They had to come from behind to score four in the final game with Montreal. They were shut out game before that. Four runs the game before that. Four runs the game before that. Not a lot of offense generated by Atlanta the last week. O 
Bryan takes it high and away. Ball one. Here's the 1-0 pitch. 2-0. Part of the reason for that, Pete, when you start looking down the lineup and you start doing the furs. Like yeah, we've got a few slumps. Last, five for their last 32 and four for the last 25. Those furs need to have bigger numbers on the front ends when you score a run. Three and oh, the count on O'Brien. And on four straight, he walks. There's the first base runner of the night for Atlanta. O'Brien at first, nobody out. Rafael Belliard, the batter. He's at 231 for the season. With one RBI. Charlie O'Brien, third on the ball club in on base percentage, right at 400. A significant night for Rafael Belliard last night. He drew his first walk of the year. It was intentional. Takes a strike at the outside corner, 0 1. It back 0 2 the count on Billiard. Billiard at second base again tonight. Mark Lemke on the disabled list. I haven't heard a progress report, have you? Coming along pretty well. They feel that by the time the 15 days are up, Mark should be ready to come back. Sure don't miss a step leather wise with this guy, though. He can play some defense. Files away another one. The count remains 0 and 2. And the way he's used is very, very difficult to stay that sharp because he might sit for 10, 12, 13 days in a row. Right. Name me one guy on the roster who takes more ground balls at short and at second when he's not playing that does Raphael Belliard. Just and stays ready it every during day. During batting practice, too, which is, you know, that's better than taking a ground ball off the fungo bat of a coach. You need those, but taking it during BP. Little comebacker to West. Going to second in time there. That's the only out they'll get. Belliard becomes the runner at first with one down for Greg Maddox. You know why David West made that play? Because he knew who was running at first. He knows with the catcher he's got time to uh, <laughs> heads up Charlie he could end up in left field. He knows with the catcher running he's got time to make sure he feels the ball. Normally with Marquise Grissom or, or Blouser or Justice or Kelly you got to make sure of one out at first. He could make sure of one out but he knew he had the time to make it at second. See if Maddox is bunting here. He's hitting 179 for the year, 5 out of 28. He and Steve Avery and Tom Glavin each lead the club with four sacrifices. Maddox trying to make it five, fouls away the first one on one. Don't look for deception out of Maddox either. He is from the school of square around as quick as you can, get yourself established. Seems like each organization teaches a different way to do it, but Maddox is more comfortable squaring around completely and getting ready to bunt before the pitch is even delivered. Hayes remains in at third. Although he, he does square around Pete from that position he can choke up and slap the uh, ball if they want to take the bunt off and they'll let him do a little slug bunt. One ball one strike. Gets a good bunt down. This will be fielded by the pitcher West. On the Morandini covering for the out. Down to second goes Belliard. A runner 
at second with two outs and back to the top of the order now Marquise Grissom and as hot as Marquise Grissom has been who do you think was taking some extra hitting Marquise underneath Grissom underneath today they couldn't take regular batting practice because the field was covered but Marquise working with Clarence Jones on his stroke before the game tonight what does he have now an eight game hitting streak he had a 14 game hitting streak for a while. 22 out of his last 23, 40 hits in his last 96 at bats, hitting over 400 over that stretch. Almost had one out of here in the first inning when he flied out to deep left. Fouls this one off 0 and 1. There's your runner at second, Belliard. Braves still looking for their first hit off of David West. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1 1, way outside, 2 and 1. Like he's made his mind up. He wants Marquise Grissom to hit a breaking ball. He's thrown him one fastball, but it was just a nibble pitch. Marquise's eyes light up when he sees a high fastball. Ground ball sharply hit the third, fielded by Hayes across to first in time. And that's it for Atlanta in the third. They leave a runner at second. We go to the bottom half of the third, still scoreless. Bottom of the third, time for us to tell you what's on deck for the Braves, brought to you by Armor All Deck Protector. Two more here in Philadelphia, 1.30 time tomorrow. It'll be Tom Glavin against Michael Mims in the final game of the series. 6.05 first pitch. We'll join you at 6 o'clock here on TBS. That's Steve Avery against Kurt Schilling in the Monday night game, and that's what's on deck for the Braves. And we go to the bottom half of the third. Pitcher David West will lead things off. Still looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 5. Gives you a great big old strike zone up there. And he takes one for a strike on one. You know I bet he's one of those guys that has trouble in the game but just wears out that pitchers league at five o'clock. No one do. Doesn't he look like he'd be a five o'clock hitter. Yeah, he does look like one of those guys that might hit a couple over the wall in batting practice. He's a 175 career hitter coming into this year. Not bad. A lot of people I know would have taken it. Here's the 0-2. That's all for West. First strikeout for Maddox. One gone. Back to the top of the order now. Len Dykstra. It was a pitcher hitting Pete, but there again, we've talked about it before. The chance to see Maddox's philosophy about pitching. I know we hear about people saying, well, you get two strikes, you waste a pitch. Yeah, he gets two strikes. He makes a pitch with a purpose, and the purpose there was to hit the outside part of the plate against David West. He does that against all nine in the lineup. Dykstra grounded out to third in the first inning. High in the air to left. Kelly had him played almost perfectly. And quickly two are down here in the bottom of the third. And now Mickey Morandini, we were talking about him before the game tonight, Don. He's a player that kind of quietly came into the Phillies lineup, surrounded by a lot of other players that get a lot more publicity. But you know, when you watch this guy play day in, day out, you begin to appreciate him more and more. This guy's a good little player. Yes, he is, and I think you can compare him a lot to Mark Lemke. Both of them scrappy, you know, not six foot five type guys. He takes a strike on one. You get no shortage of effort. They can turn the double play. They play gutsy, hard nosed defense. And I think they're both tough outs. Here's the 0 1 now to Morandini. Popped him up, foul territory, third base side. Oliva coming over near the box seats and makes the catch and holds on. 
So it's another one, two, three inning for Greg Maddox. We've completed three at Veterans Stadium. No score. Another look at the play that ended the bottom half of the third inning. The foul ball by Morandini. Jose Oliva coming over, reaching over the railing. And Jose, meet Tony from South Philly. <laughs> he almost whacked him right in the head with that glove after he made the catch. Jeff Blauser will lead things off here in the fourth inning. Still no score here at the vet. And here's Don Sutton. All right, Pete Blauser, Oliva, and McGriff. First three do up. Braves, no runs, no hits in one air. The Phillies, a single base hit, a Charlie Hayes single. Blauser continues his struggles. Grounded to short his first time up, five out of his last 33. David West coming off of a win his last start at New York. He won it six to two, six and a third innings, only two runs allowed to the Mets. He beat a good one in Jones up there. But try by Blauser. West is there and can't come up with it. We'll see how they score that, but Pete, I guarantee you that wet surface there and that infield, not quite as wet as the outfield, but there's still some moisture on the infield. Bet it had something to do with it. They're going to score that an error. He really never got the glove on it. Kicked off the tip of his glove, then by the time he made the barehanded pickup, no chance for a play. One error apiece. Blauser's at first. Here's Oliva, first time up, fly to center field. Those furs we were talking about, four for his last 47 and only six at bats since the 14th of June. That accounts for some swings like that. It is not the same hitting against Jimmy Williams and Pat Corrales as it is coming out and facing major league pitchers. I have so much admiration for guys who could come off the bench and deliver. Like Vanderwall out in uh, Colorado. There's ball one, one and one. Oliva is a guy who has made the most of his opportunities, though. He has 29 career hits in the big leagues. Over half of them, 19 to be exact, have been for extra bases. I think most people are in agreement that if he gets out there every day, he is going to hit a lot of doubles and homers. Good curveball, one and two. He had Oliva way out in his front foot on that pitch. How can you not give up on that if you're a right-handed hitter? It starts out in the left-handed batter's box. Watch the front foot. He's ready to swing the bat when that pitch is still 10 feet away. What are the chances he might get another look at one of those? It's one and two. And Blauser had himself one huge lead at first. If you're thinking steal, Blauser one foot out on the turf, one out of three in the stolen base category. And a little fastball in on him, and it's still a ball and two strikes. Braves 34 and 25, the Phillies 38 and 21, four up in the division. Philly's probably one of the surprise clubs in all of baseball. Well, they're pitching is the surprise in all of baseball this year. Foul away, still one and two. There. You know, you were looking at a team in spring training with Kurt Schilling coming off an injury, uh, Tommy Green on the disabled list, Bobby Munoz on the disabled list, and you wondered where their starters were going to come from. You look at the National League leaders, if you go down the top 10 in batting average, Tony Gwynn leads it, Derek Bell right behind him. If you go down the top 10 in home runs, Walker leads it, Gant right behind him. There isn't a Philly, there isn't a Brave in the top 10 there. If you look at runs, Mondesi leads it, there's not a Philly, not a Brave there. But if you go over to the other side of the picture, the defensive side of it, in the air to center field, that is hammered, but Dykstra got room on the warning track. Again, Oliva test Dykstra, but to the deepest part of the ballpark, and he'll come up empty. He's 0 for 2. At 
Fred McGriff will be the hitter. But if you check the other side of that coin, you go over and look at defense. Wins. Green has eight. Quantrill has seven. Smoltz has seven. Maddox has seven. Pitching. Earn run average. Maddox 185. Green 275. More pitching. Who leads the league in sl uh, saves? Slocum. He has 20. So Braves, you're not surprised that they have good pitching. It's pretty much what everybody thought. Maybe the five best starting pitchers uh, in memory, the five best put together. Pitches a ball to McGriff. Nice stop by Dalton. But I think we get so caught up in the glamour part of it, which is the three run homers in the offense, with the two clubs atop the division and the class of the division are clubs that have played good defense and have good pitching. 1 0 to McGriff. First time up, struck out looking. Another good stop by Dalton, and it's 2 0. As a matter of fact, in the second inning, he struck out McGriff looking, Justice looking, and Kelly swinging. The only three strikeouts of the night for David West, who is not really known as a strikeout pitcher. Came into the game with 17 and 27 innings. Drill to right center field. That's going to get into the alley for extra bases. Blouser will be held at third. McGriff has a double. They're at second and third with one out. First hit of the night for the Braves. Right out over the heart of the plate, Fred McGriff. Had it time perfectly. It short hops the wall out here. Dykstra gets to it quickly and gets the ball back toward the infield quickly. And for that reason, Jeff Blauser has to stay put at third. I bet you if that ball hits on any part of the turf, he might have gone ahead and sent him because you get a tricky bounce. But that hit on a warning track, a perfect carom played by Dykstra there. So the Braves threaten to break on top. McGriff at second. Blauser at third. Here's David Justice. They did 10 out of 42 since coming off the disabled list. Seven homers and 28 RBI. Foul tip 0 and 1. He's had some trouble with David West. And I bet you it's part of it is that big slow curveball. Justice only one out of seven against the Phillies left-hander. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Nothing, nothing. Game delayed because of rain from Veteran Stadium. The second of four over this holiday weekend. Her ball stays inside and it's one and one. Side with the fastball. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> to right center field. At worst, that will get one run in. That may get three in, and it does. Way out of here. A three run homer for David Justice. Home run number eight. RBIs 29, 30, and 31. And the Braves lead it three to nothing. Second time around the batting order, things going a little differently for David West. That pitch. At about the knee level and right over the heart of the plate and that's the third hitter in a row that's hit the ball right on the money. This one carrying out of the ballpark for Justice's eighth homer of the year. He's driven in 31 now. Kelly the hitter takes ball one outside. Almost the same pitch that he got him to wave at twice the first at bat. Just a little bit higher in the strike zone. Upstairs and it's 2 and 0 to Kelly. Going through that swing, but David Justice said that pitch was down. Oliva showed you where it was. That's down too, and it's three and zero. Oh. 
you think a hitter always knows where the pitch is that he hits on? I've wondered about that. They claim they do, but you can go and show them a replay and prove them wrong a lot of the time. There's a strike, and it's three and one. You know, I think most people think more home runs are hit off of pitches above the waist than below the waist, but I think more hit from knee to waist than waist to shoulder. That one was about knee high. 3 1 pitch to Kelly. Upstairs, there's ball four, so it's coming unraveled for David West here. Second walk issued tonight. Kelly will trot to first. Charlie O'Brien, the hitter. O'Brien drew the other walk, and that's going to get Johnny Padres on the phone to the bullpen. The pod, what a good guy and what a good pitching coach. He has never had a pitching staff anywhere that couldn't change speeds and, and that did not throw a lot of strikes. That phone call got Mike Williams throwing. Here's a look at Mike. That's outside, and it's 1 0. O'Brien just a hair under 300 for the year. Five homers, 10 RBIs. With this wet turf, let's see if the Braves, O'Brien is a good hit and run guy. Let's see if with the wet turf, Bobby Cox starts him, starts him in motion. Not this guy. That'll get out of play. Behind the Phillies dugout. 1 and 1 to count. Average lead for Kelly at first. That's fair foul. Foul ball. As wet as it is, that would have skipped into the corner. Tony Longmire would have been trying to play a three cushion carom out of that left field corner. Not a whole lot of room to work with. Found there. out something today about this ballpark. You know those areas that we always say where it curls back in toward the foul line? You know there's a name for those? They call them the points there at the vet. Right there where the young lady is standing or back in the corner there? Right there where the young lady is standing. They got a couple of rules in the ground rules for this ballpark. And they say any ball that hits in fair territory and bounces over the points is a ground rule double. Upstairs, two and two. Never heard him call that before. No. That right there is one of the reasons I like working with you. Trivia. <laughs> no, no, no. They don't sneak. Uh, they might try it for a year, but they don't sneak anything past us with you in the booth. Two and two to O'Brien. Still two and two. If they come apart, is that a point spread? It's one of the reasons I like working with you. <laughs> Useless information and dumb <laughs> questions. <laughs> Still two balls and two strikes. Got him. Good pitch. Strikeout number four for David West. Put it in a good spot. Two gone. Outside part of the plate about knee high. Charlie O'Brien likes to pull the ball even if he had hit that ball it probably would have gotten no better than a ground ball a second out of it. Here's Bell Yard. Chop back to the pitcher his first time up. West threw out O'Brien at second on the fielder's choice. I know that's going to come as a surprise to you but Rafael Bell Yard first pitch swing. Fouls it away and it's 0 and 1.
Kelly was going. Belliard fouls it away. 0 oh and 2. You know, I, I would think that Belliard would be a good guy to hit and run with. Because he swings at almost everything and he almost always makes contact. How many times do you see Belliard take a cut and not get a piece of the ball? Yeah, he, he swings and misses very rarely. 0 oh and 2 now. Even at pitches out of the strike zone, which he chases sometimes, like that last one. Kelly's on the move. And again, Belliard fouls it away. One of the best in the business. One of those signs meant something. The other 16 didn't. Upstairs, one and two. Remember, West used to do mostly relief work. This is only the 71st start of his career. There goes Kelly. Throw. Not going to get him. I don't know, Pete. He'll probably get another look at it. He may have swiped that one on the pitcher. Well, he got a good jump, and there, Dalton did not get a good throw off. He gets a one, two, three, almost a four step jump on David West. The throw by Darren Dalton, even with David West ducking, almost hit his pitcher. So another runner in scoring position for the Braves. Kelly is at second. Two and two, the count to Bell Yard. Tough play. Hayes hurries and can't hang on to it at first base. Throw was in time, but Hollins couldn't hang on to it. We'll see how they score it. Going to score it a base hit. Good job here by Dave Hollins of just blocking this ball and keeping it from getting by him. If it does, the run would have scored. Pete, it looked like he tried to skip that ball over there off the turf again, but instead threw it in the dirt. They're at the corners with two gone. Greg Maddox, the hitter, sacrificed his first time up. Maddox, a good hitting pitcher. Takes a strike, and it's 0-1. That sacrifice was the fifth of the year. That's tops on the pitching staff. Avery with four, Glavin with four, Merker and Smoltz with three each. There goes Belliard, and they're going to let him go. I know Maddox is a good hitter, but is he, Hal, has he driven in any runs? I don't think he has any RBIs this year. Very seldom you see a pitcher who hits for as high an average as he does who doesn't have some RBIs, but none this year. Base hit here and he gets two, but they'll strike two, one and two. That was Rafael Belliard's second stolen base of the year. He went three years without a stolen base, 92, 93, and 94. He had three back in 91. He has picked up two more this year. Last RBI almost a year ago, August the 11th. That was his last start of last season. That may have been the last night of last season, wasn't it? Inside, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Kelly at third, Belliard at second. Three to nothing Braves. We're in the top of the fourth inning. A long and productive half inning for the Braves to this point. Got him. Maddox is gone. Not happy with his swing, but the Braves pick up three on two hits and one big swing of that man's bat right there. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Braves on top, three to nothing.
This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. Bottom of the fourth inning, three to nothing Braves, Longmire, Hollins, and Dalton. Left-handed hitters all. First three do up here. Off the fist. That's probably going to get back into the crowd. O'Brien over to give it a look. 0 and 2 the count. Was that young man that we saw at the beginning of the inning in the stands, the kid that wants the Red Rider rifle? <laughs> Looks just <laughs> like him, doesn't he? What's his name? Peter Billingsley? Daisy Red Rider. 0 and 2 to Longmire. You'll shoot your eye out with one of those things. <laughs> Misses in. Oh, it didn't. A little bit of a delayed call by Charlie Relliford. He hung us all out to dry with that one. Maddox brings up his second strikeout. Yeah, very late call here by Charlie Relliford. But that's that pitch that Maddox gets so many of his called third strikes on. It starts out inside and it backs up, comes back in and catches the inside corner. Might catch a couple of umpires by surprise from time to time, too. Perhaps that's the reason for the that delayed call. Five in a row set down by Maddox. Here's Hollins. This is inside. It's one and oh. Outside corner, one and one. Good pitch there, one and two. Fifth in the National League and leads the Phillies with an on base percentage of over 400. If you're going to get it against Maddox, though, you're going to have to swing the bat. No walks in the lab. Look at that. That is such an amazing string. Got him with a change. He is in his 37th consecutive inning now without a walk. Back to back strikeouts, six in a row set down by Maddox. Strikeout number three. Change up. Actually in the dirt. So Maddox looks like he's settling in and starting to get comfortable. Darren Dalton to greet him. Dalton grounded to short his first time up. Outside, one and oh. Same spot, same call. 0 and 2. We were talking earlier about catchers. Make that 1 and 1. 1 and 1. Now 1 and 2. Same spot, different call. You just see Maddox throw, and I think even up here in our part of it, you start anticipating those being call strikes. That time it is. He strikes out the side. Dalton not happy with the call. He'll exchange a few words with Charlie. Rowe. He's been tossed he out of the game. Tossed. That was a quick out of here. That's twice in one week that Dalton has got the quiet, quick heave home. Larry Bullock can't understand it. We're going to have ourselves a little hullabaloo here. And they better keep Dalton out of there or he'll cost himself more than just one night. See the end of the night from Jim Fergosi too. But it was a one, two, three inning for Greg Maddox. Longmire, Hollins, and Dalton all gone. Nothing doing for the Phillies. Four in the books, three to nothing to score. We'll catch you up when we come back. Here's another look at the last pitch to Darren Dalton as he's called out on strikes on this 0 2 pitch that he thought was outside. What he does is he goes around to the front side of the plate, lays his bat down where he thought the pitch was, then said something to Charlie Relliford, and it was a very quick good evening from Charlie Relliford once Dalton opened his mouth. That's the second time, as you mentioned, Don, that he's been tossed out of a game this week. He was thrown out of a game in the first inning against Cincinnati the day before the Braves got to town. That was a quick hook, too, because whatever he said, he said headed toward the dugout, so 
Must have gotten very sensitive about something. Lenny Webster's going to come on to fill his spot. There's a look at Lenny. They signed him as a free agent in April. Last year he was with Montreal. Pretty good year. Hit 275 in a part time role. Remember the Braves saw him in Minnesota back in the series. First pitch to Grissom fouled away and it's 0 and 1. The Braves sent eight men to bat here in the fourth inning. Picked up three runs, lead it three to nothing. Three runs, three hits for the Braves. Greg Maddox working on a one hitter. Marquise is 9 and 0 for thus far. A strike. 0 and 2. Grissom an eight game hitting streak on the line 22 out of his last 23 down the right field line headed for the corner and over the point and into the crowd see still 0 and 2 makes it much easier to say than over that little area that curls out back toward the foul line <laughs> that should be marked with a red stake for a hazard. <laughs> He's at 292 for the year. Inside with the fastball, one and two. Ground ball to Hayes. Plenty of time. Makes the play. One gone. How about you, Lenny Webster is one who has a lot of family and friends uh, who kind of check out our telecast to see how he's doing here. Lenny was born in New Orleans, but he makes his home now in the Atlanta area in College Park. 30 years old. Starting his seventh year of in the big leagues. Parts of 88, 9, 90, 91, full-time big leaguer, 92, 3, and 4, and this year. Jeff Blauser is up. Blauser 0 for 2. Grounded a short on on an air. Tried to bunt. West couldn't handle it. Blauser scored the first run ahead of David Justice's eighth home run of the year. To the deepest part of the ballpark. That's drilled to left field, but right at Longmire. And isn't that the way it goes? When you're struggling, you hit a few soft ones at people, then you hit a couple on the button. They too, right at people. So Blauser 0 for 3 tonight. Jose Oliva, the hitter. I want to join my friends Buzz, Pat, and Jay Wyndham down in Pensacola, Florida, wishing a happy birthday to Nancy Haynes. Nancy, 29 years old, again this year. Two gone for Oliva. Outside, 1 0. Oliva has been running Dykstra. Around in center field, twice fly to him, then get that one, one and one. That's a big swing. Curveball stays high, two and one. I want to take a moment to congratulate Grady Little, too, who's going to be managing the National League All Star squad for the International League All Star game in Scranton, PA, on the 12th. And a couple of players off of Richmond made it. Dale Polly, left handed pitcher, one and one with four saves. And Eduardo Perez, I'm happy for him. Good guy. To center field, another chance for Dykstra, the hat trick. Oliva has hit to him twice. West has himself a one, two, three inning here in the fifth inning. We're halfway home. Braves lead it three to nothing. A three run shot by David Justice for the Braves in the fourth inning gives them the lead. And Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you as we go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. That's nice for Mr. Maddox to work with. You wouldn't. There's nobody you'd rather have out there with a lead. He works to Jim Eisenreich. 
who grounded to short his first time up. Greg working very fast tonight. Check swings at a foul ball. No signal from Charlie Relaford. I'm assuming it was. It's 0 and 2. Greg working on a five game hitting streak or five great game winning streak delivers that change up a little bit low. And he went over the 2000 innings pitch mark tonight tonight earlier in the game. Hit hard but one hopper right to Fred. And McGriff runs to the bag himself one away. Turned out to be a pretty decent night after some rain delayed things at the start. Charlie Hayes has the Phillies only hit of the night. It was a ground ball single up the middle. Maddox had fallen behind him 3 and 0. And then just laid three right down the middle. He was not going to walk him with two outs. Stocker followed with a ground ball and that was the end of the inning. A little thrill for me tonight, Joe. Got to work an inning on CBS Radio with Ernie Harwell, one of the all-time, all-time greats in our business. And what a great guy. Nice man. A true gentleman. Southern gentleman. He's from Georgia. Yeah. Started with the Atlanta Crackers, in fact. 2-0 the count to Charlie Hayes. And he's behind him 3-0 again. And you could hear Maddox yell rack of frets from all the way up here uh -huh. with 30,000 people in the park. And splits the plate with that one three and one left hander Kyle Abbott begins to work for the Phillies. Another one down the middle hit hard to right field and you could see the water come up as it hit right in front of David Justice who had to play that defensively. But you got to credit Maddox. He's not a guy who's going to mess around when he falls behind in the count. He's going to throw strikes. This one ate David up a little bit. It gets off that wet turf so quickly, but he kept his body in front of it, so it didn't get by. It's like skipping rocks on a pond. Just about, yeah. Baseball really hydroplanes on that wet turf. Stocker grounded a second his first time up. He's been struggling. Now time call as Hayes takes a minute to put a brace on his right hand. Obviously has injured it in a slide somewhere along the way. Phillies had one runner aboard in the first inning on an error by Blouser. A single by Hayes in the second. And a one out single by Hayes here in the fifth. Charlie's been a great pickup for the Phillies. Off the plate, Belliard will have to hurry just to get one, and he does. Two down. Hayes moves into scoring position for the pitcher's spot, but David West is called back. While we have a moment here, Joe, I don't know if you, I'm sure you saw too all the highlights about Eddie Murray's 3,000th hit for which we want to congratulate him. And he did speak to the press, and I don't know what reasons he's had in the past for not so doing, but what a shame. What an articulate, humble. I mean, the things he had to say were just perfect. It was uh, anything but what you have read about him a snarling, surly, incommunicative guy. Most of that's come skip from people who he wouldn't talk to. I mean, he's he's never made a secret that he just doesn't talk to the press for whatever reasons, when maybe reasons of his own. And they might choosing. be might be justifiable reasons. Right. Who knows? Right. It's just that that reputation of a very classy ball player and a guy who Cal Ripken credits with learning the game from and how to play this game. I think that says a whole lot about him. Well, we're happy for him, and I hope his. Lack of silence continues. Gary Varsho is the pinch hitter. He goes after the first pitch and obliges by hitting one right to Fred McGriff for the out, and that'll get Maddox out of the inning. No runs, a hit, one stranded in scoring position. We've completed five innings, and the Braves lead it 3 0.
a little thrill for me tonight Joe got to work an inning on CBS radio with Ernie Harwell one of the all time all time greats in our business and what a great guy nice man a true gentleman southern gentleman he's from Georgia yeah started with the Atlanta Crackers in fact. Two and oh the count to Charlie Hayes and he's behind him three and oh again. And you could hear Maddox yell rack of frets from all the way up here uh -huh. with 30,000 <laughs> people in the park. And splits the plate with that one three and one left hander Kyle Abbott begins to work for the Phillies. Another one down the middle hit hard to right field and you could see the water come up as it hit right in front of David Justice who had to play that defensively. But you got to credit Maddox. He's not a guy who's going to mess around when he falls behind in the count. He's going to throw strikes. This one ate David up a little bit. It gets off that wet turf so quickly, but he kept his body in front of it so it didn't get by. It's like skipping rocks on a pond. Just about, yeah. Baseball really hydroplanes on that wet turf. Stocker grounded a second his first time up. He's been struggling. Now time called as Hayes takes a minute to put a brace on his right hand. Obviously has injured it in a slide somewhere along the way. Phillies had one runner aboard in the first inning on an error by Blouser. A single by Hayes in the second. And a one out single by Hayes here in the fifth. Charlie's been a great pickup for the Phillies. Off the plate, Belliard will have to hurry just to get one, and he does. Two down. Hayes moves into scoring position for the pitcher spot, but David West is called back. While we have a moment here, Joe, I don't know if you, I'm sure you saw too all the highlights about Eddie Murray's 3,000th hit, for which we want to congratulate him. And he did speak to the press, and I don't know what reasons he's had in the past for not so doing, but what a shame. What an articulate, humble. I mean, the things he had to say were just perfect. It was uh, anything but what you have read about him a snarling, surly, incommunicative guy. Most of that's come skip from people who he wouldn't talk to. I mean he's he's never made a secret that he just doesn't talk to the press for whatever reasons when it may be reasons of his own and they might choosing. be might be justifiable reasons. Right. Who knows? Right. It's just that that reputation of a very classy ball player and a guy who Cal Ripken credits with learning the game from and how to play this game. I think that says a whole lot about him. Well we're happy for him and I hope his lack of silence continues Gary Varsho is the pinch hitter he goes after the first pitch and obliges by hitting one right to Fred McGriff for the out and that'll get Maddox out of the inning no runs a hit one stranded in scoring position we've completed five innings and the Braves lead it three nothing. Time for your Budweiser game summary. David Justice, a three run homer, one of the runs unearned. Maddox has been sensational again. And Darren Dalton has been thrown out of two of the Phillies' last three games one against Cincinnati, one against Atlanta. He pretty much asked for that one tonight. Yeah, it looked you, like it. You, you just knew that he was going to get it when he laid that bat down on Charlie Rutherford. New pitcher for the Phillies is left hander Kyle Abbott, who's having a pretty good year out of the bullpen. You see his numbers eight walks in 19 innings but 16 strikeouts and this is his 12th appearance they've all been in relief 27 years old 6 4 2 15 and he's out of Newberry Massachusetts lives now in Arlington Texas last year pitched in Japan he works to McGriff this is low for ball one. Lefties are only hitting 176 against Abbott. Fred doubled and scored on the Justice home run his last time up. That's out of play.
believe it was Abbott who came on in relief for West in that game West started against the Braves in Atlanta and wound up picking up the win. Three innings of relief gave up only one run. Two and one to McGriff. Fastball, a high one, and got away with one there. Count is two and two. That was back on May 8th, and in fact, that was Abbott's first win of the year. Out of play. Braves jumped on David West in the fourth inning. He got things started with his own mistake on an easy play, it looked like, on a bunt attempt by Jeff Blauser. Change up. He got a piece of it to stay alive. West worked five innings, gave up three hits, three runs, two were earned. He walked two, struck out five, and gave up the home run to Justice. Another high fastball, and Fred just missed that one. Abbott should have been losing. He had plenty of time to warm up, but if he keeps pitching Fred up there, he's going to pay. One of the few guys you ever heard of was a high school letterman in water polo. They have a water polo team where you went to high no, school? No, they did not. <laughs> Chased a high one, took him right up the ladder, and Fred couldn't lay off of that one. Strikes out the first batter. You joined us late. Here's the difference in the game. With two on, David Justice. He knew it when the bat hit the ball. Dankstra was hoping to play it off the wall, but that made it 3 nothing, and that's precisely where we are right now. His other at bat, he struck out against West back in the second inning. He goes after a high one and pops it up. Foul territory. Collins calls for it and has it two down. And Mike Kelly the hitter. You know knowing the way David West pitches not overpowering throws a lot of breaking stuff but he's around the plate usually I really thought Ryan Klesko would be in there tonight as well as he's swinging the bat but Bobby is staying with his platoon system Kelly tonight has struck out walked and stolen a base. Lays off a slow curve. Braves on the horns of a dilemma with Kelly. He can run, he can throw, he's got tremendous power. He can catch the ball. But will he make contact? Enough 37 strikeouts and 101 at bats breaks down to if he played enough to bat 505 times, that's 185 strikeouts. Too that's many. Not going to work. But if he played more, would the strikeouts. Go away. He well, hit that one right on the nose and it'll drop for a base hit. He's one out of two tonight. A two out single and Charlie O'Brien will be the batter. Charlie has walked and struck out. Got some extension on that swing. But you bring up the good point the hands go back first and that's makes it tough. That's OK but he's got so much movement in yeah. it. Charlie O'Brien's got a sweet new bat skip. Checking that out in the clubhouse today. It's got like six lines of grain in it, which is almost unheard of these days. He has not yet put it to good use tonight, however. Oh, yes. But he will. I wish somebody would drop us a note and explain to us why they can't find the good wood now that they used to find for bats. There's still plenty of trees. A lot of different manufacturers now, too. Used to be one or two, and now there's about a half dozen. That's hit hard on the ground, but Morandini is there to scoop it up and throw him out. And that'll do it for the Braves. They get a hit, but strand a runner. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Braves still lead it 3 0.
There's a close up of a fairly typical bat with a lot of grain in it. If you can imagine one that only has six lines of grain in it, you know what I'm talking about. A very hard bat for Charlie O'Brien. And maybe his next time up, he'll be able to put one out there amongst them. Top of the order up for the Phillies. Dykstra, then Morandini, and Tony Longmire. Dykstra 0 for 2 tonight. He is grounded at third, fly to left. Trying to take Maddox to the opposite field, but no luck yet. And the pitching machine delivers a strike. Fifty starts for the Braves as an Atlanta Brave, and he is 32 and nine. That's earning your keep. Check swing, and he fouled it off in the count 0 and 2. I admire him even more days like against the Mets last Sunday when he gave up 10 hits and six innings and still was able to win the game. When he, he doesn't have his quality he, stuff, he figures out a way. He comes up with a way to get outs. He's not afraid to give up a couple of hits in an inning, but he knows how to get out of jams. Jammed him with a fastball and Dykstra lucky he didn't break his bat. I was talking to John Smoltz before the ball game. He says this mound is too high by standards, by regulations. They're talking about raising the mound to give the pitchers an added advantage as early as perhaps next year. He says this one's very high. The first couple of pitches he threw last night warming up, he felt like he was stepping off a mountain. Got him with a changeup. Strikeout number five for Maddox. Now this is on a guy that's trying to look to go the other way. That's right. But the bottom just drops out of the pitch. Mickey Morandini has been aboard on an error and he has fouled out to Oliva. Jose's made a couple of good plays defensively. Just watch O'Brien. Watch the glove and sooner or later a white dot will land in it. Change up 0 and 2. The pressure on the hitter knowing every pitch in his arsenal he can throw for a strike. Can't look to one location. Morandini stays alive with that one. I mentioned Maddox's five game winning streak. It's even better than that on the road. He's won his last 10 starts on the road with an ERA of 0.67 and six complete games. <laughs> You read these numbers and it's like it, it, after a point you start reading the little bitty microscopic things you get down to the one point something on the ERA and then the zero point and it's it doesn't factor somehow you read stats so much in this business sometimes you're not even listening to what you say. Yeah. Got Morandini another change up strikeout number six. Sometimes you want to replay your audio. Did I just say that. Is that true. <laughs> How many innings now, Hal, without a walk? 37 and two thirds innings since he last walked a batter. Longmire looks funny on the check swing, but he fouled it off. 0 and 1. He took a call third strike his last time up and has bounced into a fielder's choice. 1 and 1 to count. Our statistician Hal Galimas had an interesting day. He started yesterday with a car and wound up with a submarine. <laughs> Not funny. One one pitch. A little low. Two and one. I guess they had a little rain back home, huh? Yeah. WSB radio got flooded. Some parking garages got flooded. Two one pitch. Hit hard up the middle. Backhanded by Belliard. Low throw dug out by McGriff. Nice play all around. Good range by Rafi. And a 1 2 3 inning for Maddox. We go to the seventh. Braves still lead at 3 0. Hi. 
We go to the top half of the seventh inning. Time to check out tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who are the only two relievers who have won the National League Cy Young since 1985? We'll give you the answer in the bottom of the seventh. Right now, here's Skip Carey. And Belliard corks one to center. Dykstra's there waiting. He's got it. One pitch, one out. We'll give you a hint. One of them's with the Braves, and one of them used to be. Here's Greg Maddox. Who gets absolutely no hand at all from the front? Maybe he will now that he's announced. Let's see. Yeah, he does. The good fans appreciate seeing this guy. That's a question you get asked more and more as you go through the league. It must be a thrill to watch him pitch every time. And it is. Stocker on two hops. Take it easy, Greg. Two pitches, two out. Marquise Grissom hasn't had much luck tonight, but he hit the ball hard his first two times up. He was working in the into hitting into a screen on a soft toss drill with Clarence Jones. Clarence was working with him on low pitches. Wanted him to quit reaching for the ball with his body. Let his arms do the work, extend the bat, drop the head of the bat on those low pitches, and quit trying to lift them. And his first time up, he smoked one to left field. Next time up, he hit a low pitch real hard that Charlie Hayes was able to glove and throw him out on. Don't forget when the Braves come home Tuesday night against the Dodgers big fireworks show after the game sponsored by BP oil tickets available at Ticketmaster two four nine six four hundred or at the stadium and we think Ideo Nomo will pitch on Wednesday night for the Dodgers against John Smoltz. Looking forward to that. Not sure trying to confirm that now. Popped up right side everybody chasing at Holland still going so is Eisenreich nobody gets there. Those fireworks by the way. There's going to be at least two different kinds there on that particular night the. The ooze. And, and of the, course the Oz. and the Oz. Yeah that's right. It really helps the award winning 10th inning radio show too. <laughs> well here's the American League scores. <laughs> The stretch by Kyle Abbott and the delivery is upstairs. Two balls and a strike. Sometimes when you dip your body a little bit after that low pitch, about the only thing you can do is lift to try to get the ball in the air, and that's what Clarence Jones wants Marquise to avoid, especially on this turf. Speaking of that ooze and Oz thing, that great game, I forget what year it was. It lasted till 5 in the morning because of all the rain delays and 15 innings. Poor Ernie had to, they had Ernie broadcasting the fireworks show after that, and that's all he said. On Ooh, the radio? Yeah. <laughs> on TV. Ooh, oh. Ah. Oh. Well, he's a true pro. If anybody could broadcast fireworks, it would be Ernie Johnson. That's it. Whenever Ernie enters a room, there's a lot of fireworks. <laughs> Grissom waits and Abbott ready to work. Three nothing Atlanta in the seventh. Boy mm -hmm. had a cut there. Mm -hmm. Boy what a good swing. Great extension. He was just a little bit under it. Watch how he levels off on this pitch. It's against that firm front side. Great hands. Tremendous bat speed generated. 2 2 pitch. Here it is. Threw him a let up. Nowhere near. Jeff Blouser waits to hit next. Talking about firm front side when he locks that, that knee a little bit and hits against his front foot. It's almost like a centrifugal force that's created. And the hips open. That's the first walk issued by Kyle Abbott. And Jeff Blouser the banner. Grissom could be running here. He's 12 out of 15 in the stolen base department if he gets thrown out. You still have your two, three, and four hitters up there. And that game I was talking about where Rick Camp hit the home run was back July 4th, 1985.
Grissom will lead the pitch. A little low, one ball, no strikes. That's the night I I told my wife I got home at 5.30 in the morning. It wasn't the first time that had ever happened, but the first time I could honestly say I had a clear conscience. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. The count. Grissom, a pretty good size lead. To the plate. There's a strike at the knees on the inside edge. It used to be if a base runner got one foot out on the carpet, that was considered a pretty good lead on artificial fields. Marquise gets out there like it's just his normal, casual, routine lead. Abbott hasn't thrown over there yet. Two and one downstairs. Tom Glavin and Mike Mims tomorrow. Have it for you at 1.30 Eastern Time. Steve Avery and Kurt Schilling Monday at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. Then home for three with the Dodgers and three with the Giants. There he goes. High and outside. Lenny Webster's throw is high and he's in there. A strong throw, but just a little high it was enough to get Marquise in. He's 13 out of 16 now. Lenny Webster has a great arm, and that's the only thing that kept this close. You can see a good crossover step by Marquise. High outside pitch. Sometimes Webster catches his pitchers by surprise a little bit, the way he off guard a little bit, the way he fires the ball back at them. A muggy night in Philadelphia, as you can see. A base hit means an insurance run here. Foul back, full count. Last night we talked about how tough Tyler Green is for the Phillies when he has runners on base. Abbott's been that way. He's been pretty stingy giving up hits when he's had guys on base this year. Four for 40 against him. Tell you what, the Johnny Padres a pretty good hitting coach. I mean, pitching here. Lined into right field. Let's see if Eisenreich can get there. Yes, good play. Blouser hit it hard, but Eisenreich made a good play. No hits, no runs, no errors, one left. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Three nothing, Atlanta. Three nothing, we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Time to give you the answer to our Aflac trivia question. The only two relievers who have won the National League Cy Young since 1985. One is Steve Bedrosian. And the former Bray was Mark Davis. He won it for the Padres in 89. Hollins doesn't get a fastball, and the bottom of the seventh is underway. Hollins, Webster, and Eisenreich, the first three. It's only a 3 0 game. You feel very good with Maddox on the mound, but he's human. The pitch. He didn't miss by much. He threw him another fastball, one and one. When he pitched against the Phillies earlier this year, he was given a 4 0 lead, left the game after five innings, leading 4 to 1, but the bullpen couldn't hold it. Right through there, another fastball. Three in a row, one and two. He probably thinks with the hitter better than anybody in baseball. I think so too. I think when he, when you can throw pitches for strikes like he can in so many different ways, it's not a sit. You don't ever get in a situation where you're out guessing yourself. That pitch didn't miss by much, by the way. It's two and two. And when you're ahead in the count, it's awful fun if you're the pitcher. Grounded foul. It's two and two. Still. Saturday, July 8th, kids' wallet night at the ballpark. First 10,000 kids, 14 and under, receive a Braves wallet compliments of Rolades and Brunos. It's a 7 10 game against the Giants. The pitch. Foul tip to Brian could not hang on. And I think each one of those wallets is going to have a picture of you inside. Is no, that right? no. No, we're trying to get the people to come to the ballpark. Oh. Two balls, two strikes. Got him, pulled the string, made him look awful. Seven strikeouts for Maddox on the night. 
Seventy six on the year. Sometimes you go to visiting ballparks and like Eddie Murray last night when he got the standing ovation for his three thousandth hit visiting ball clubs start pulling for a guy who's doing so well. That hasn't quite happened here at the vet tonight because of the rivalry with these two ball clubs but many times Greg Maddox gets a big following and a lot of appreciation because of the way he pitches. We had a look back of course this year it's hard to tell but. There should be more people in the park when he pitches. Oh and one the count. To Lenny Webster is hitting 205 with three RBI. Well, there are a lot of people that say they are not coming to the ballpark this year for a multitude of reasons, whether strike related or not. But if you don't come to watch this guy pitch, you're cheating yourself. Grounded short should be easy. Blouser, hop, skip, throw, got him. Two down. How many fly balls have been hit? There's been a pop fly to third. Dykstra fly to left. That's it. And a line drive to right by Hayes. His other hit was a ground ball. Mm -hmm. So he's had it pretty much the whole package going tonight. Here's Eisenman. But then he almost always has the whole package going. So. <laughs> Blouser gets yet another chance. It is not supposed to look this easy, folks. It's not over yet, but he's pitching great at the end of seven, three nothing Atlanta. We go to the eighth inning. Jose Oliva will lead it off. He has kept Dykstra busy. He's headed out there three times. A couple of them hit pretty hard, but he is hitless on the night. And his average is at 148. Check swing strike, nothing in one. If the Braves can get six more outs here, they will move back to within three of the Phillies. Jose's slump that he had when he came into this ballgame, four for 46. Not relative to his at bats tonight because he's hit the ball, as you say, he's hit pretty hard, had some good swings tonight. High pop, short right field, Eisenreich coming on, Morandini going out, it's Eisenreich on the run making the catch. Let's take a look at the Delta scoreboard. Cubbies rally today and beat the Cardinals 8 to 7. San Francisco a winner over San Diego. Montreal back on the offensive track. Cincinnati's hit four homers tonight, including Ron Gantz 18th. Houston got three in the first. They always score early and they lead Pittsburgh behind Shane Reynolds. No Score yet at Los Angeles just underway there. Detroit a big winner. Cecil Fielder with two homers. Baltimore a winner. Oakland still playing pretty good baseball. Home runs from Javier, Baroa, and Paquette. Chicago scoring early and often. Minnesota leading Cleveland. No score at Milwaukee. Not yet underway at Seattle. McGriff is one for three and fouls it off. Fielder now with 19 homers. McGuire a dramatic slam last night to win a game against the Angels. Yeah, off of uh, Lee Smith. Yeah, it's, it, he blew two slave saves in a row. One and two, the count. They play Fred straight away in the outfield. Look, Look out, out, folks. See if everybody's all right down below. That one got in there in a big hurry. I don't know if they're fighting for the ball or if somebody's hurt. I think everybody's all right. Yeah, I think it hit an empty seat. That could have been nasty because that ball was sucked. A ball and two strikes. The offensive hero of the night to this point, David Justice, waits to hit next. Foul tipped off the glove of Bernie Webster. The maestro. Abbott was the guy that in 1992 couldn't get anybody out. His record was 1 and 14. Pitched in AAA in 93 and then went to Japan last year and pitched for the Kintetsu Buffaloes. 
crowd wanted that to be called a strike. The pitch was somewhat similar to the one that got Dalton thrown out of the game. Fred will probably get another breaking ball here, 2 2. Nope. On the ground to Morandini. Abbott has done a whale of a job. He has done his job to perfection. He's kept his team close. Here's David Justice. When you're asked to get left handed hitters out and you are successful, you're going to have a job for a long time, too, and they're hitting under 200 against him. Justice has struck out. He's hit the three run homer and he is grounded up, or rather, popped out to first. High one ball, no strikes. Lefties, Hal Galima tells me now hitting only 150 against him. He's sort of like Tyler Green, that one in 14 year, bad as he was. They kept running him out here, out, yeah. th out there, which you don't do if you've given up on a guy. Especially at the big league level. Look out. That pitch, oddly enough, that's been a successful pitch for him. At least tonight, McGriff chased one up there to strike out his first time up against him, and Justice chased one up there and popped out. Out in front, rounds it foul. Nice catch by a fan in the front row. That that pitch to a hitter, you see it so well, it's, it's hard to lay off of it, but if it's high enough out of the zone, tough to get on top of with your bat so that's why it's effective again the lefty is ready look out up and in three and two the count Runner aboard with two out and Kelly the batter. Second walk for Abbott in the game. Kelly has struck out, walked, stolen a base, and single. If he can get it into play, he's got a chance to be a good player. That sounds simplistic, but it's really the truth. His speed will get him infield hits, his power will allow him to drive in runs and hit homers. You've heard the description of a short quick swing. Mike Kelly has a long swing. It's powerful but it it just takes him a while to get going. David was going to try to steal. He broke way too early and was picked up. He slipped. And then he was dead. Now he's embarrassed. No <laughs> hits. No runs. No airs. No one left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Still three nothing Atlanta. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Charlie Hayes has both the hits and he leads it off. And he hits that hard, but Belliard had him played perfectly. One out. And that's just the way Maddox likes it. One pitch, one out. You know the old thing about walks to strikeouts ratio for pitchers? Maddox in his last 39 and a third innings, 28 strikeouts, no walks. Does that mean he has no ratio? That's right, that's infinity. Mariano Duncan has grabbed the bat and will hit next. They are out of left hand pinch hitters. Gary Varsho is the only one they got when they play this lineup. We'll see Duncan tomorrow, I'm sure, as they'll shift their lineup around. They platoon a good bit to the Phillies. Ricky Botanico begins to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. Our guys have been like the Maytag repairman tonight. Nothing happening. Downstairs. If we were near a beach, this would be a good day for the bullpen to all go to the beach and have a good day. Maddox pitching. You don't have to exactly pace yourself during the course of the afternoon. But let's not celebrate too early. These Phillies have shown the ability to come from behind. Two and two. 
you feel bad because you know it's only a three run game but with him pitching it's, it's almost like it's 12 to nothing. Where were we New York. Or I believe it was New York might have been Rusty Staub commenting something about when Maddox had one nothing lead over the Mets and that the fact that you hate to think that the game's over but when he has a run on you that's it. There's that change and I don't know if that's his best pitch or not but it's amongst them. That's eight strikeouts. It's all location. See Charlie move outside. The ball drops right to the target, out of the reach of the hitter. Duncan, the next hitter. So now he has 29 strikeouts, no walks. That's even more infinity than we had before. <laughs> Duncan stands in. Hitting a 281. Two homers, 13 runs batted in. He's a good fastball hitter. High chopper to third, but foul. Oliva gloves it. He had a great series against the Braves in Atlanta. Eight for 18 with a homer. They had a hard time keeping him off the bases. Had him out in front. Greg ahead one and two. They almost didn't re-sign him too. He was a free agent last year, but they brought him back, and he's certainly been a valuable part of their ball club. 33-375. Maddox for the year, 77 strikeouts, eight walks, two to one strikeout to base on balls ratio is considered good. Maddox is 9.6 to one. That may be the best in the history of baseball. It might be. Last year, Saberhagen had more wins than walks, right? He's always yes. had a good walks to innings pitch ratio. I think he walked 13 batters. Ground ball fair into the right field corner. And it takes that funny hop, and Duncan's on his way to second. He'll pull in there. He's not running too well, but he's in there with a double. And that brings the top of the order to the plate. He came off the bench cold. He may have been a little stiff as he was rounding first because he certainly wasn't thinking about a triple. Just between Fred and the line, and then that part of the stands that juts out near the foul line. It's a little bit like Fenway Park in that regard. Creates a lot of problems for the left and right fielder. Remember, it's just a 3 nothing game. Here's Len Dykstra. He's 0 for 3, but he's a tough clutch hitter, as I'm sure you know. Saberhagen last year 13 walks 143 strikeouts his ratio was 11 to 1. Wow. Runner at second the pitch. A little bit low one ball no strikes that was a pretty good pitch. Duncan only the second man to get beyond first base in this game. Hayes reached third in the fifth, but did not score. Fly ball left center field. Grissom is not going to get there. That ball is to the wall, and a run is in. And Dykstra pulls in at second. And the tying run comes to the plate. That time the way the Braves aligned their outfield defense hurt him. It was too shallow at least for the swing because he stayed with the pitch a change up. He was staying back looking for it all the way and drilled it in the gap. Good speed on both those guys Kelly and Grissom but they couldn't catch up with that and some two out rallying here for the Phillies. Mickey Morandini wears us out. Not with that pitch 0 and 1 Morandini. 14 out of 47 against Maddox in his career 0 for 3 tonight. He did reach on an air in the first. Talked about how he has been a pain in the side of the Braves. Looks like he's hurt a lot of other clubs too. He's a pretty good little player. 
by pop out of play Maddox in front 0 and 2 let's see what he does here. Once in a while a good hitter like a Dykstra will go up there and on the first pitch they're not afraid to look for something that's out of the ordinary and that worked for Dykstra there he got the change up stayed back hadn't even committed himself when the ball came out of Maddox's hands and he drilled that change up. Bell yard way out in right field against Morandini on this wet carpet. Just missed boy just about had him struck out and I wonder if the ejection of Dalton has sort of intimidated the home plate umpire a little bit of human nature maybe so it might have a little bit but normally speaking these guys know how much Greg works the corners and he generally gets the benefit of the doubt. The one two with Dykstra at second. Laid off the change. It's two and two. That's the pitch that he normally gets the strikeout on. And that was a that was a pretty good pitch. I'm surprised he didn't get that call. O'Brien to the mound. Is Maddox all right here? Yeah, I think he's I think he's made two real good pitches, and it's like he's at a point where he needs a little advice. He didn't offer it to change up. I didn't get the call on the cut fastball inside. What do we do here? And that's where it's good to have a guy with Charlie's experience back there to help him out. Hopefully that's the last one with two outs tonight. 2-2 two -two pitch. Here we go. Got it. Threw him the change of pace down and away. He couldn't lay off and Maddox gets out of the jam but. A run scores on two two out hits. A runner is left. We go to the ninth seeking insurance. It's a 3 1 ball game. Duncan stays in the game to play second base for the Phillies, and Ricky Botanico is on the pitch. Botanico out of New Britain, Connecticut, and he's also out of Florida Southern University. 6'1, 210 pounder. He's 25 years old. Last year pitched at Scranton where he was 3 and 1. Then at Reading where he was 2 and 2 with 22, 22 saves. Hard thrower and a guy who went undrafted. Phillies signed him as a free agent back in 91 out of college. But he can rush it up there pretty good. Mike Kelly will lead it off against him. Here is where you would. Love to perhaps use a Ryan Plesko, but with a two run lead, you've got to keep Kelly's leather in the game. Mike's had a good night, though. One out of two. He takes a strike, 0 1. Lower end up for us, Kelly O'Brien and Belliard. And the heart of the order for the Phillies Longmire, Hollins, and Lenny Webster. Check swing foul into the Phillies dugout. See if that got anybody. Almost got Kurt Schilling. Kurt Schilling. Watch his hands go back here. You don't have time for all that movement against the guy who's a hard thrower. Tried to stop his swing, but couldn't. On three pitches. Botelico strikes out the first man he faces, Charlie O'Brien, the batter. This was fastball right down the inside, maybe the inner third of the plate. It certainly had a large part of it. That's pretty good setup and closer. Yeah, when your setup man's got an ERA of 1.19. One ball, no strikes. He's averaged right about a strike out an inning all the way up through the minor leagues in the Philly system. Charlie had a good cut, but he fouls it back at one and one. Charlie's not going to get cheated. It doesn't matter who you are or how hard you throw. He's up there hacking and usually gets a piece of it. Two balls and a strike. See, there's a little difference there with Charlie and the way he starts his swing. He waves the bat around a little bit. But he starts with his hands already in a position pushed away from him a little bit. So all he does is cock his wrist a little bit to get the bat going. 
three and one. Boy, when it's so hard to change, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, what you've done your whole life. Very difficult, and and a lot of times you you're told all the way up through your college minor league career, you know, if something's working, don't change it. You have somebody that wants to mess with your swing a little bit, you're really reluctant to do that. There's a drive, but I think foul. Boy, he hit the daylights out of that thing. Upper deck. Upper deck shot about 10 to 15 feet foul. What a. That's that bat you were talking about. Some sweet wood. That sends a buzz through the crowd. And the 3 2 pitch. Curve hit hard. Hayes has it. He's a good third baseman. Bad throw to first, or maybe he did that on purpose. The one hop on the rug, two down. Probably did do it on purpose because he couldn't throw it that far short unless he meant to. No, and plus, consider the fact that turf is still wet from the rains earlier, and he was just playing it safe. And make sure he didn't throw a wet baseball away. Botanico upset out there, I think, by the upper deck shot from O'Brien. He's <laughs> kicking around the dirt because he knows. His teammates will be all over him about that play. 0 oh and 1 to Rafi. I doubt that it will come as a surprise to you that Greg Maddox has moved on deck and will hit for himself with Belliard reaching. 0 oh and 2. You're right, I'm not surprised. Rafi trying to be a brave here and tomahawk one. Stays alive. It's still 0 2. 3 1 Atlanta, our score. We're in the ninth. That's pretty impressive. Got a good live arm. What are the odds of Billiard hitting one out against this guy? This <laughs> Scared of him. Two and two. Line down the right field line, but foul may have broken his bat. He did. Let's see if he goes back to get that home run bat. He's been saving it. Yep, it's got the tape on it. I think that's the one. If it's his home run bat, it's an antique. You don't see too many home run hitters that choke up, but watch out here. The 2-2. Two -two. Line to the center field. Dykstra can't get there. It falls for a hit. Take that. Here's Maddox. All he did was use his hands. Hard thrower. You don't have time to take a long stride. Watch this. He's picked his foot up, put it back down, and let the bat do the work. Short, short stride. Nice barely swing. Barely strode it yeah. off. Maddox, some people boo, but most of them cheer just even though they're Phillies fans, they appreciate his abilities. Oh, he had a rip. You never like to think defensively in a situation like this when you got a two run lead. But this is a situation where Mike's in Belliard. And if he gets thrown out, you take the risk out of having your number one guy up there against a guy who can do some damage with that fastball and sometimes lets one get away. He's walked a few guys. Oh, and two. And if he makes it, then you've got a legitimate chance for him to blue point him somewhere yeah. and you get an insurance. Yeah, it's a no lose situation. Rafi already with an SB tonight. Two on the year.
curve. Bloop that and played perfectly. Eisenreicher's there. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The heart of the Phillies order comes to the plate. Atlanta leads it three to one. Bottom of the ninth, Tony Longmire leads it off. Phillies trying to give their crowd of more than 33,000 a finish here. Longmire, Hollins, and Webster. If anybody gets on, Eisenreich, and then Hayes, who's been poisoned all night long. Mark Wallers begins to loosen as Maddox goes to work. Here we go. Going away, one ball, no strengths. Like last night when the Braves fell behind late, had Kelly at the plate against Slocum, a situation or a matchup they didn't like. Line drive, base hit, tying run comes to the plate. Even more important now with the leadoff hit, the ejection of Darren Dalton and how that has, is going to come back and factor into whatever the Phillies do here in the ninth inning. Dave Hollins 0 for 3. He's struck out twice. He has four homers on the year in his career. Five out of 35 against Greg Maddox. He has grounded into four double plays. Longmire leads. D Rack, boy, it's good to get that first pitch in there. 0 and 1. Yeah, he's a patient hitter. He's tied for first in the league with walks with Barry Bonds. He's not afraid to take a pitch, but when you got Maddox out there, that's a tough situation when you fall behind early. Squib foul, 0 and 2, the count. It's like he's trying to keep everything away from Hollins. He knows he has power. He is, Hollins has struggled hitting from the left side of the plate this year, but he doesn't want to make a mistake inside. If he's going to miss, he's going to miss away. Did he go? No. I didn't think he did either. No. Randy Marsh for the call. Not that time. A ball and two strikes. Got him thinking away. Now let's see if they waste one inside and keep it way in off the plate. Watch Charlie and see where he sets up. Nope, staying away. Got him, took something off for the third time in a row. Holland's out on strikes. Ten strikeouts for Maddox. That's the first one. Stayed with the change up, too. And threw that one for a strike. That was probably going to be a call third if he didn't swing. Coming into this year, Maddox's career high in strikeouts, 11. I don't think he's gotten that this year. He has not. Here's Lenny Webster. Well, see who the gods are smiling on. He's only in the game because of a Dalton ejection. See if that helps or hurts Atlanta. Strike, going one. Previous high for Maddox and strikeouts this year was eight. He has ten now. A double play here would be nice. We don't need any more strikeouts. Strike two. The letters on the outside edge. Webster didn't think so. 0 and 2. Webster is 0 for 2 in his career against Maddox, including the ground out tonight. And there's one of those borderline pitches that went Maddox's way. And they move outside and miss out there, hoping he would offer one and two. This guy hasn't hit any homers this year, but he's certainly capable of doing so. He's a big, strong guy. A free swinger, too. Ten strikeouts this year and 45 at bats. Whoop. Close, two and two. Pretty good eye there to lay off that pitch. 2 2. He still wants to try to get him to hit the ball on the ground. He may come back with a similar pitch that he got Hollins on. That would be the change up away. Even if he does hit it, he'll have to supply all the power to get it out of the infield. The 2 2. Deep short. Blouser up. Out there. That's all they can get. 
If it hit it a little bit the other way, it would have been in business. Now there are two out. Eisen ranked the batter. He has three homers. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Has yet to get the ball out of the infield. Three out of 12 against Maddox in his career. Eisenreich's been aggressive. Two of the three times tonight that he's been to the plate, he has chased the first pitch. Both of those times he got jammed. Last time up, he that suffered a broken bat on the ground at his shortstop. He's got to be thinking inside. If you've been jammed, if you're a hitter and you've been jammed three times, you're thinking in there. A little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. Charlie Hayes is next. He's hit the ball hard all night long. Two out of three. Hitters hate to be jammed and don't want it to happen four times. Braves play him way around toward left. There's a strike. It's one and one. No argument from Eisenreich, though the umpires and the crowd are upset. Kelly is camped on the left field line. Grissom way over in left center. The stretch, the pitch. Started to go, tried to stop, did stop. Two balls and a strike. Again, I don't think the Braves can argue about that one. No. Bobby Cox disagrees with us. For goodness sakes, he said. Bobby and Randy Marsh had some words last night on the ball. A pitch to Marquise Grissom. Strike on the corner at the knees. Perfect pitch, two and two. Change up, and he has Eisenreich shaking his head. I'm telling you that he's been thinking about that inside pitch. He just keeps expecting it. This hole at bat. He's been jammed all night long and Maddox giving him nothing but pitches away. Eisenreich still looking inside. Got it. What a job. He's the best folks. He is the best. He matches his career high with 11 strikeouts. The Braves finally have a win over the Philadelphia Phillies and the Braves are back to within three games of first place. And without a doubt, our AutoZone player of the game is Greg Maddox. He's now 11 and 0 over his last 11 road starts. That walks to innings pitched and strikeouts. Absolutely incredible that we talked about earlier, but he's now 8 and 1 on the year. His fourth complete game and only a couple of two out hits in the eighth inning prevented another shutout. Congratulations to Maddox and the Braves. They finally get a W over the Phillies, and we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Atlanta Braves baseball brought to you by Delta Airlines. You'll love the way we fly. And by Aflac, covering the unexpected cost of getting well. Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. Well if you knock off one of those errors you have almost the exact line score as the game last night in reverse the Phillies last night three runs and five hits and no errors. But each side for the second straight night only can rack up five hits but the Braves come out on top tonight Braves left six the Phillies stranded five Maddox the winner David West the loser and Greg Maddox continues to press impress everyone no matter how many times you see him pitch he is brilliant thirty three thousand three hundred and seventy five here at the ballpark tonight on a rainy night that got underway twenty three minutes late on a rain delay and the game took two hours and twenty five minutes tomorrow it will be Tom Glavin against Michael Mims a battle of left handers we'll have it for you at one thirty Eastern time right here on TBS coming up next it's uptown Saturday night Starring Bill Cosby and Sidney Poitier. For Joe Simpson, for Pete Van Weer and Don Sutton, our entire TBS crew, even for the Philly fanatic from Philadelphia. So long, everybody.